Hey, uh, Dan from danwagner.co with another remix on the date filtering techniques that we've been covering in the latest tutorials. Imagine in this case we have our data block on sheet 1 with dates in column H as in hotel and we want to allow the user to input some dates and the resulting rows from that filtering action should wind up on the destination sheet this time instead of going on to a new sheet. And so with this technique we'll not only demo how the code appropriately finds the paste destination, right, so it should wind up somewhere down here, but moreover the technique that we're going to use allows for a data range on the destination sheet that is arbitrary, right, so it could be over a few columns or up a few rows or down a few rows it doesn't really matter, the code is always going to find the right spot. But enough talk, let's showcase how it works with a few successful runs. So I'm going to pick a, uh, a start date of the 5th of March, and I'm going to pick an end date of the 10th of March, and we'll get this data transferred message box. And if you take a look at our destination sheet, you can see that the 5th of March through the 10th of March has been appended correctly, right? We still have this existing data, and our code found the right paste destination regardless of the location. But just to prove that it works arbitrarily, let's go ahead and shift this over to, say, um, starting in column A, with the last row in uh, being row 15. So we'll kick this macro off again. This time, say, I'll pick the 10th through, let's say, the 14th. And sweet. You can see, once again, we get the 10th through the 14th. The code found the appropriate destination and pasted it exactly where we needed it to go. And finally, we have some safeguards in place that were originally detailed uh, the first time around when we remixed the original question. And let's say, uh, let's say I'm I'm looking for April data, but there's no April data in the original date block. In that case, we're going to get a nice warning from the code that says, you know, those dates. Filter out all the data, nothing is available, and nothing's going to happen, which allows our user to start from the beginning and pick the appropriate date range. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the interesting parts of the Add to Destination worksheet. You can find all this other code at the link provided in the video description below. I want to stay laser focused on the really interesting part of what's happening here and that takes place largely from this point on. So I'm going to drop in some stop points and we're going to walk down the results really slowly. So let's go ahead and let's move our destination once again. This time let's make it pretty easy. Let's put everything starting in column A and go ahead and let the code rip. I'm going to pick the 10th of March to the 15th of March. Cool. So we know that we skipped this guard clause right here where we're checking to make sure that at least one data row remains, which is great. So the first thing we do is assign range result. So range result contains all the data rows and does not contain the header row, which is exactly what we want in this case because the headers are already on the destination sheet. And we get rid of the header row with this offset. We resize the range and then we select only the visible cells. So I'm going to click play and move on to the next line. Our next step is to identify 
the destination last row. So on our destination sheet, this should give us a value of 8 once I click play again. And this last occupied row number is totally boilerplate code that comes from the VBA tool belt. I highly recommend you go out and download it. There's no use in writing and rewriting these functions over and over again. So when I click play, sweet, long destination last row is in fact 8. And here is where a lot of the magic happens. So supposing that we check column A and the last row in column A gives us a non-null string value. If that's the case, then we know that our data range exists in column A. And if that's the case, then we can trivially just say that the destination first column should be 1, right? because column A is equal to 1. So because our data does exist in column A, when I click play, you're going to notice we're going to skip down to this else statement, and we're going to assign long destination first column to 1. Sweet. So at this point, we have made an easy decision about the first column, and now we set up range target which is just the last destination row plus one, of course, because we don't want to overwrite any data, and the first column, which should give us cell A9. And when I click play a couple more times, you're going to see the data gets dropped in and we get our message box. Awesome. So let's switch this destination data over a few more columns and examine what happens inside here as we identify a first column that is not column A. I'm going to kick off the macro again. This time I'll pick the 5th of March through the 10th of March. Okay, once again, we grab only the filtered data, no headers. We identify the last destination row. In this case, it should uh, again be 8. Sweet, looking good. And so now we're going to go ahead and check out row 8 in column A. And row 8 in column A is empty, right? It's VB null string. And so in this case, we're going to work through this whole statement identifying last, or excuse me, the the destination first column, which is a long here. So we're using these line extenders, even though it looks like it's multiple lines, it's really only one line. So we're saying we want to start in cell A8. That's what's happening here, because long destination last row is 8, and the range is uh, starts with A. And then we execute this end XL to write, which has Excel essentially do what happens when on your keyboard you hold down control and hit the right arrow. So it's going to jump on over to column E and then we ask for the column number there. So the result of executing this next line should give us a long destination first column of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It should be 5. Sweet! And so you can see using this simple if statement we're able to identify the first column of a data range wherever it happens to be on our destination sheet. And of course, if we click play through a few more times, we're going to wind up with our handy message box to let the user know that the data was transferred and that the, the data is appropriately placed here at the end of the existing data range. So with that, I think we're all set. If you have any questions or concerns about how this code works, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can get all my contact information from the linked article below. Thanks so much and have a good one.